Hey, this is Fiber Hall Michelle, and no, I haven't been doing videos like I used to. I tried a new thing, um, something everybody said I should try. Uh, I get up as much as I can, which you people that know <laughs> what we go through, it's like uh, the first couple hours you're wishing for it, then you're praying for it, then you're sweating through it, and then you have to have a painful bowel movement. Hey, I should start doing one of those, uh, you know. Never mind, getting old. Uh, anyway, a lot of you say that I ramble, do at times, especially when there's a lot in my mind and rage and anger from all the bullshit that we have to go through. So anyone that doesn't want to hear swear words or doesn't want to hear the truth, just turn it off. Because you know what? When I get uh, bad remarks, and this is to all you people that are so kind to me out there that really have pushed me to go forward with my life and and you guys are responsible for my art studio you're responsible for me still getting up and trying to do whatever I did because of your comments and I I love you so much but the rest of you that want to say something bad I go to your page and you've never made a video in your life you probably never put yourself on the line for anything I bet if somebody says something to you that's not true you probably go along with it and then talk about it behind their back well that's not me I'm the truth, always. So, what brought it on today? The big part of it, anyway. I gotta grab my dog. I got a new puppy! Zack Attack. They help you. I got, they make you get up. He's a puppy. He's gonna, he's so cute. Look at that. He goes with the new painting. It's behind me. It's called, You Look, oh, I wrote it out rhythmically because, you know, I used to be a singer at one point in my life when I could get out of bed. You look too good to be, oh wait, uh, start. You look too good, you can't be sick. It's in your head, get out of bed. How many times have we heard that? It's in your head, get out of bed. So I've been trying it. Now the problem with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, demyelinating nervous system syndrome, which they can't ever put a name on, uh, Getting out of bed is hard. It's like the hardest thing we do. Um, they get mad at us because we don't have a good diet. Well, you know, you got to get up and be able to get some food. You have to be able to afford the food. You know, people just that don't have it won't get it. And I know you guys get it. Thank you for your subscriptions and everything. I mean, I just lost it today. I go to Script Pharmacy here in Walton Manors, Florida. I'm one of the people, you know, like you guys out there, I don't take the uh, medication because it's fun or because I want to get high or to sell it. I take it because when I wake up in the morning, my pain is so effervescent, so everywhere. I feel like I just had a head-on crash with somebody. You know, the pain is so bad. And then sometimes your eyes are pasted shut so you can't even roll over and get your own pain medication out. Those are how you wake up, people that don't have this. And we never tell you guys. You think that we, we're complaining all the time. We don't complain half as much as we feel. Anytime we eat, drink, go to the bathroom, it's pain. Anytime, if you can actually eat, then when you try to go for elimination, you either can't or it's so painful, it's like you're in the in the bathroom crying. You know, it's like you people with health, <laughs> you just don't get it. But okay, so the point today, you know, I've, I've never ever misused my pain management. Um, in Florida, though, the officials have. DEA agents and sheriffs were caught trying to take uh, pain medication up to New York. They went through borders. Rush Limbaugh, that's calling women whores, uh, was caught at the border with his Viagra. Who would sleep with him but a whore? Come on. He's got to pay for it. You know that shit. That's just, oh, he's just ugly. And he's such a hypocrite. It's like, if you have uh, insurance... A man can get a penile erection pump, and I believe a lot of them get Viagra paid for. But a woman can no longer get birth control. They have to pay for it. They have to worry about if they're ready to bring a new soul into the world if they get pregnant. And, you know, if you look at statistics, it's mostly, <laughs> it's mostly women 
you know, that, that are responsible. There's always a, you know, bad apple in society, but then they get a lot of, uh, attention if they're like Rush Limbaugh because, you know, he's rich. How come nobody talks about that? How come McCain can talk about, uh, marriage and how it should be, you know, the sanctity after he left his wife because she was ill. I don't know all, yeah, that's why I call myself logic from a high school drop, but I don't know all the details. I just know it's there and it's hypocritical. And one, uh, one person asked him the question, but then he was too intimidated to follow through. You know what? We need more anger. We need to speak out more. We need to not complain, but we need to let people know exactly how we're feeling, but which is hard because you don't know. Well, where's your pain level today? Well, let's see. Um, I was up all night because my neck hurt. I couldn't get comfortable. Uh, my, uh, my nerves and my elbows and my wrists, they're both, um, that's a call. <laughs> they're both having, my puppy's being cute, sorry. They're both having, uh, you know, a rough time. So you can never get comfortable. You're sweating. You, you know, you just can't relax. If you ate, you're probably having a stomach ache of some point. So people do not know how frustrating this is. And all you spouses and doctors and everybody else out there, we're telling you a quarter of it because we're amazed that all this could happen to us. How could, how could, my teeth all feel like I need to have a root canal in all of them one day. And then I'm like in bed and the nerves go up and through your nasal area into your eyes. It can cause scleritis. Oh, I don't know if it causes it. Somebody's going to rub me on it, but it comes out your skull. And by the way, scleritis is, that was one of the first things that actually made a doctor take me seriously that I was ill, uh, probably back in about, uh, 2000, 1999 is that I kept getting scleritis, which was, it just shows up as like a red patch on your eye, but it is so painful. And uh, it's like, if you bend over, you feel like your eye's gonna fall out. It's like, just like when you try to pee and the pee doesn't come out before it burns your area. Just like if you eat something and it's not bugging you now, you know it will. Then if you have a cocktail, somebody's gonna give her, aren't you on medication? It's like, oh my God, do you know what it's like to have a flu? Every day, every day. Epstein-Barr mononucleosis. I had that when I was in, uh, I guess junior high, I don't know, you know. But now it's reactivated. And so it's like, you guys don't know the frustration of like, well, do I brush my teeth? today because that might set off the nerve or should I just not you know and by the way any of you do not let anybody give you a root canal all of the bacteria in the bad tooth will go into your body just have them take it out pull the tooth and then you know what they have new stuff coming up that you know will fill that hole without having to get a, an expensive bridge and all that stuff but you know, it's funny and it's an amazing thing in our society. They want to cut benefits on Medicare and things that help people that really need it. And by the way, people that aren't sick, I've been working since I'm 13 years old. I had three jobs. I was a manager at Doreen or Schnitzel in Utah when I was 14. Boston, I'm my age, 45 now. You know, so from 13 years on, I've worked, I worked. And I also had my own business. And in my own business, everybody said, you can't make money as a singer, but it was my love. It's what I love to do. So I did make money as a singer. And I give back to all my communities, Holy Cross, hospital, any AIDS organization, breast cancer, all of them. They would always come and want to, you know, me to give my time as a musician free to do a four hour gig when usually, you know, I could make five to a thousand dollars, you know, and uh, actually be able to pay my bills. But I did most of my stuff, I would say a, a good, I don't even know, but most of it was for people. And it's like, when you go out now, there's nothing for us. 
I just got kicked out of uh, Bioscript Pharmacy here in Walton Manors because they don't want to fill my prescriptions anymore because I don't have AIDS or, um, you know, one of the major diseases. Um, having uh, your whole nervous system fall apart, demyelinating nervous system disorder, and none of this is going to be correct at this point. If you guys want the facts, I'll just post it on my uh, my blog that I haven't done much with, but there's, you know, pictures there. And a lot of good articles about teeth, about eyes, about nose, about... Now I have lymphedema! Didn't know even what the hell it was, except I had a friend that had it, but she had, you know, very large legs and they never knew what to do with her. And of course she has died without decent medical condition or care. But uh, lymphedema, basically all your limbs get swollen and when you sweat like we do, then they just hurt. And I got that because I got a hysterectomy that I didn't need because we have all these doctors telling us something. And if we happen to have a decent insurance, and sometimes Zach, mom is talking. If we happen to have a good insurance policy at the time, well, they're going to send us in for more and more treatments. So I guess my point on this part of it is, is do not make a split decision if somebody's going to open your body up. If you have a nerve or a slipped disc or they're trying to give you that uh, surgery, of course, I told you I don't have the names for things right now, you know, the, the fibro fog that is real, by the way. One stupid idiotic neurologist, I hope I can remember his name because I'm going to start writing about everybody that's bad. Dr. Milner, don't go, Oakland. We should all do this. We should all pass on these doctors. I'm just... I can't believe it. So that I go in to fill my medication, never did anything wrong. Of course, my doctors don't want me to have it four times a day, so I can only have it two times a day, which means the more I do, the more pain I get into. And you guys know that. Everybody tells us to get out of bed, but then we're not supposed to have pain medication. Uh, how the hell do you do that? The only way I'm not in pain is if I just lay there like a damn beached well all day, and then I hate myself. You know, the more I do, the more pain I'm in. So... They take uh, the quantity away, and then they just told me at BioScript, since I don't have a major disease, that I can no longer get my, my medication there. And it's because they're not able to bill the government enough money because I will not take Lyrica. I will not take Neurontin. I won't take any of that bullshit that they've been trying to... They know nothing about it. They have just been experimenting on us. You know, let's try it this milligram. Let's try it this milligram. Let's try it with this. Let's try it with that. And then you're really laying in bed, but at least you don't give a shit because you're lying in bed feeling like you don't want to get out at all because you're on that stuff and you're even sicker in a worse way. My best advice, and I really started going through this in 1993, except for, you know, when you think back and your kid, we talked about that. It's like, Put it all together and, you know, you get the stupidest comments from people. It's like, well, did you ever cleanse your bowel? Did you try acupuncture? Did you have massage? No, I'm a 45-year-old woman that used to have a dream job. I sang for a living and I loved it. I used to help people out every day. I used to get in my van and go across country. I explored everywhere. I did anything I wanted to. I got on my Harley and drove across places that most people wouldn't do. So yeah, I'm enjoying staying here in bed, getting a disability check that I'm very lucky to have that a lot of people don't get. And by the way, on that one, make sure you go with the biggest lawyer firm you have because they do so many that, you know, the government red stamps them through, even though it did take me five years, five years. And so now that I don't take all that bullshit, they, the, uh, the pharmacy, doesn't get the big bucks from the government. So they're cutting me to get your pain medication elsewhere. This one's right across the street from me. I was so ill today. It took me till two o'clock to get up. I had sweat so many times and nothing helped, nothing helped. I finally stumble in there and they're probably stupid enough to think I'm a drug addict or something. But no, the mono has been activated again. So 
I don't know, you guys. It's like, how much can you take? How many insults? And I went off on the guy. It's like, I've been there with him for five years. I never went to any place and tried to, you know, get double scripts like people do because you can sell these things for a lot of money and a lot of people do. And they ru ruin it for us that just want to get out of bed and try to have a life. And he said, well, you know, you don't have HIV. or And I'm like, well, maybe I should go out and fuck somebody then and get, you know, HIV. Because you try to go to Walgreens, they're not going to give it to you. Because the state has tightened down so much because of all the pill mills. It has nothing to do with chronic pain care. That has nothing to do with us. The people like Rush Limbaugh that tell you, you know, anyway, a lot of you just will not understand until you get here and I hope to God you don't because your whole life is gone there's nothing worse than being in pain every moment of your life it's like you try I have a whole studio of art now and a local place uh, ones that I've done stuff for by the way for free well didn't want to use me but then they call my partner and they you know they want a donation for the for the show. <laughs> I guess the old me that's not over it would have probably just done it. And I probably would have done it. But in her email back, she put, well, maybe we'll put you in an upcoming art show. Well, maybe I'll get you some tablecloths. <laughs> hey, there comes a point when we have to stop giving. And from the men and women that write to me, I know you're all givers and you're all great people. And I know I've been talking way too long, but you know what? I was just over it. You you can't get your doctor to write the script and you can't fill it. Then, you know, okay, a friend of mine, she's, you know, we understand you all have a life. We all understand you have a bad day. We don't put anything else. I mean, we don't think that we're more important than you guys, but, you know, I... I, I rarely bring up anything around people. Most people don't even know I'm ill that I'm around. And, you know, but when you're in tears, it's kind of hard to fight it and you think they're a friend. She says, well, uh, I understand I'm tired. I've been moving for three days. I know moving is a pain in the ass, isn't it? It's horrible. I've done it probably 30 times in my life and I never liked it once. But you know what? That will go away. But since 2004, Anytime I get out of bed, it's not a gift like some of you think. It's me climbing up the goddamn mountain again after I got into a wreck over a 300-foot cliff and falling down and climbing up and falling down and never, ever feeling well. I know I need to break this up into shorter segments, and hopefully at some point I'll have... a, a brain that can think, but fibro fog can't even do her bills anymore. So, you know what? All I'm asking is, everybody, take it easier on the person next to you. Stop with the gossip. Stop with the hurtful shit. You know, I was losing it today, and one person actually says, I hope you feel better. And they didn't sound like, you know, I hope you feel better. It's like, he felt it. And then I was stupid enough to say, well, you know, Thank you for that. It meant a lot. Well, I don't want to hear about you. I was like, well, I don't want to. That's the phone ring. Isn't that irritating? Okay. Well, I was stupid enough to say that because, you know, I don't know. But then another woman came in and she was so kind. And she actually took a few minutes. And the point to that is show kindness and warmth. It's much easier. You'll feel much better about it. And you never know how much the person across from you may need it. It may be the thing that will get them through another day. Just show some kindness. You guys have showed me so much kindness, and I'm trying to write y'all back, and I just, I should get that thing. I'll just do your videos instead, because you can see I can talk. Anyway, so that's my painting behind us. It's probably um, backward, but that's me in bed since 2004. I'm so sick of people saying, oh, but you look good. You can't be sick. Okay, you're complimenting me that I'm a pretty girl. Pretty old woman. I'm 45. But come on! I feel like shit. I can't move. I stink. Everywhere that you can think of hurts. Even losing my hair. Come on! 
I don't want to hear I look good, but I like you to say, you know, just, just something nice. That's it. Just be nicer and uh, start speaking out more because people don't know they're hypocrites. I think they do know that. But you have to call people on their bullshit. You have to speak up. What, what else do we have to lose? We've lost our jobs. We've lost our parents. We've lost loved ones. What else do you have to lose? Your self-respect because you can't work anymore. So start speaking out. Fire behind Michelle. The damn phone again. I hate those. I love you guys. Bye.